Anna Simeone ventured into beef farming 20 years ago with the aim of exporting to major international markets. It is only in 2012 that he managed to export his first batch to the United States. But it was within good reason. Local demand was high. We produce on an average of, of, of 10 tons a year of, 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 of honey that we pack. And um, this is all sold very quickly into this market. In fact, it's a bit annoying because we don't have enough volumes to sustain some of these markets. The prices here in Kenya are extremely good. If you look at the world market prices vis-a-vis -vis what, what our prices are here, our local prices are extremely good for the product. While domestic business was good, Kenya was banned from exporting honey to the European Union in 2008. This was because of heavy residue and pesticides in the product. Through training and annual analysis at the International Center for Insect Physiology and Ecology, the country is back on track. When it comes to certification, it is the presence of chemicals. And you see, we've gone into agriculture and for our crops, you know, to thrive, we will want pesticides, we want fertilizers and herbicides and all these. We forget the bees go to forage in these plants. And when they forage, they will pick those residues, take back to the hive, they will make the honey, those residues will be present in the honey. So that becomes a big challenge. So first, educating the farmers that where the place, the apiary, is really important becomes a challenge because you know, they're used to having close to their farms. And if it's close to their farms, we discourage the use of chemicals. We will ask them to go for bio pesticides you know, that are really certified. There's the chemicals that are certified by the certification body that are safe to use. Isipe has trained more than 10,000 beekeepers not only in Kenya, but also in 26 other countries including Yemen, Egypt and Madagascar. On the other hand, state-run national beekeeping station produces bee farming accessories at subsidized rates to help boost apiculture. The people we are having here, almost 70% are youth because they want to venture into transformatory beekeeping. But the older ones also come because they are retired and they want to pick up something that is of commercial nature and then nurture it into uh, uh, an industrial uh, aspect so that they also bring their workers to come and learn and then they can supervise. So I can say for sure uh, we are changing from the old adage that the old will keep this to the adage that the young ones will come in and transform the industry. Bee farming and harvesting has come a long way from when people used to hunt for honey in swamps. Today, modern technology and harvesting techniques are employed. This process relies on breeding and results in high yields as well as quality. Farmers' revenues have risen 600% over the last years to 360 shillings per kilo of honey. Because of introduction of the Langstroth hives, women have access to those hives. Earlier, this was a job of men. Now, 50% women in Mwingi are participating, in West Pokot also. So the women has become the leader of the beekeeping now for the, in, in terms of modern technology, not the traditional one. They cannot climb the tree and scoop the whole thing. Yeah? And that was also a very traditional way of scooping the whole honey, crushing it, then selling with the bees and other stuff, dead ones. Now you can see what they produce. We've worked with community groups in Mwingi, in Mount Kenya, in Kakamega, and you can see their livelihoods have really changed because they're able now to make, to get good quality honey, make income, and their livelihoods change. They're able to have money to go to hospital, take their children to school, just improve their general livelihood. So it is a viable business. And it's not labor intensive because, you know, you have your apiary out there, the bees are foraging, so you only just need to, you know, maintain it once or twice a week. So it's not labor intensive. Farmers who previously discarded beekeeping byproducts such as beeswax and propolis are now cashing in on the many associated health and cosmetic benefits. Farmers are trained how to make candles, body creams and anti-dandruff hair shampoos at the national beekeeping stations. But many challenges still plague the industry. One of the biggest constraints in these countries is theft of honey in the field, vandalizing of beehives. It is one of the biggest constraints. And I believe it's not only in Kenya, it's in the whole of Africa. And that is because of the demand supply issue. 
While Kenya hardly features in the honey export market with a fraction of the global production of 1.5 metric tons, Ernest is content exporting modern hives in the meantime. We've got two lines of business here. One of the lines is, my main line is beekeeping equipment, whereby we, we make beehives, the modern type of beehives here, and then we, we, we sell beehives, the extractors, bee suits, we do training, and so we export the beekeeping equipment. I've even done some exports to America of my own, my beehives. So we do Rwanda, we do Sudan, we do Uganda, we do Tanzania, we do Somalia. But as far as honey is concerned, we don't export any honey at the moment. <laughs>